So uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get into the first thing we we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about steeping. Uh, that was asked uh, on uh, the Facebook page last week. And I kind of wanted to cover this because a lot of people, um, when you start talking about steeping, everybody starts talking about this, that, or the other. They have their style, you know, and um, everything else. Uh, there's a few ways to steep. Uh, you can artificially steep. Uh, you'll see Hoof, myself, I think Cadillac does it as well, where we use an ultrasonic cleaner with hot water in it. And we artificially steep our liquids when we're doing a DIY so that we can go ahead and um, get that going. That also works for when you get a brand new liquid from a place you bought it. You may, the liquid may have just been made. It may have been sitting for a while. But that's one way you can steep it. Um, you don't Ordinary tap water heat is about as much heat as you want to do. No boiling water, nothing like that. Uh, you've got to understand, Jake brought this up a few times, that the, the nicotine destabilizes at a certain temperature. His call was 50 to 60 degrees uh, Celsius, which is right around the 180 to 190 range. Now, normal tap water should never hit above 120 degrees. If it's over 120 degrees, um, later elemental. But uh, So hot tap water is fine. If you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, you can just soak it in, and you can soak the liquids in hot tap water. It takes a little bit longer because the ultrasonic cleaner does two things. It uh, causes what's called cavitation. So like when you shake an e-liquid and you see, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see the bubbles that are inside of there. But it basically causes bubbles to form and then explode. Uh, it's a way of uh, mixing as well as using the heat and, and getting everything to become a homogenous mixture. Now, other ways I've tried steeping is I've steeped it with the cap off, trying to get certain things to come off, like, um, say, volatile acids, like heavy citrus flavors, heavy citric acid. That works. It also concentrates the liquid a little bit. Um, I usually do it at room temperature. Um, I don't throw my stuff into a dark room. I kind of let the light do its normal thing because I'm steeping it at very low, or I'm, I'm vaping at very low um, nicotine levels because I'm at a 6. See, I'm not as worried about light as, as somebody who's like at 24 or 18 should be. So if you have higher nicotine liquids, I would say uh, everything above a 12. What's going on, Deluxe? Good to see you. Uh, I would say, you know, steep it in the dark or put it inside of a box. Um, you can do it with the lid on. You can do it with the lid off. Uh, you can put the lid on, it causes a little bit of oxidation in the nicotine. Um, so it can drop the nick level a little bit. Now, I would say to to know exactly how much it will drop it, you get one of Jake's test kits and use that. Because that's uh, something that I don't have the information on. If Jake was here, I'd ask him to elaborate on it. Um, but pretty much when it comes to steeping, steeping is just a matter of time. If anybody has ever made tea you realize that tea in hot water gets stronger faster and the hotter the water the more bitter the tea can become whereas if you do it at the right temperatures you get the right flavors and everything um, gotta do that. okay and um, you know so take it into account that what you're doing is is you're just trying to artificially age a liquid um, I think the oxygenation method is causing more oxidation, flavor fall off, nicotine degradation, more than just letting it sit uh, in the bottle and let it do its thing for a, a few days. Um, I mean, this is the DIY liquid that I made last week. And uh, since then, I've, changed, I've added a few things to it. I just added a little bit more graham cracker to it yesterday. Finally, it's coming out the way I like it to. But the liquid has progressively gotten darker over the course of a week. And uh, flavors getting much better because it took three days for the cheesecake to come out of it. So uh, steeping, steeping is a matter of, of also testing, seeing what's going on with the liquid. It's just like any other food product. If you leave it out too long, it can go bad. So you have to kind of play with it and see where it's going. It's, it's, uh, um, it's just like cooking. 
really it is. It's just like cooking. It is a perishable product, and you just have to think of it as such and just not sit there and say there's one prescribed mat, uh, method. You have to kind of figure the method you want to follow to yourself. Um, personally, I like the, uh, the hot water steeping, and uh, the way I'll do it is if I'm not using the ultrasonic cleaner, I will uh, go ahead and get a, hot, get a bowl of hot water. I'll take the cap off, get air into it, put the cap on, shake it, throw it into the hot water, let it sit until the water cools down, maybe, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And I'll do that two or three times. Uh, now that I have an ultrasonic vapor, uh, ultrasonic cleaner, it changes everything. Um, yeah, taste it every two to three days. Uh, some people taste every day. Some people believe in, in injecting as much air into it as possible. I just like getting air into it and shaking it up to get air bubbles into it and sealing it. Uh, pretty much kind of uh, part of the cavitation process. So I know it's not, it's not a simple, concise answer to a question about steeping uh, because there is so many different ways to do it and so many different things that can be done. But I think that uh, if you just uh, exercise caution when you first start steeping um, and grow with a, a, a style of steeping, grow with a way of steeping that uh, you'll get better and better at it, you know? <laughs> you, you know, it, it's, in, uh, you know, I, I can see that happening. If, it, if, if it was washed in hot water, and shaken, that would probably be about right because you'd probably have it completely submerged in hot water for a while, maybe uh, a 10 minute wash cycle, and then it's going to get spun, so it's going to get the piss shaken out of it. Yeah, you know, so I mean, there's an idea. If you want to try it, take your, uh, take your, take your juice, put it in a, uh, in a laundry bag, tie it up nice and tight, Throw it in the washing machine and uh, give it a wash cycle with some hot water and then let it spin it, you know. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be like a centrifuge. Uh, centrifuge, though, is, is mostly for separating liquids. Uh, if you've ever used a centrifuge, it actually takes the components of the liquids and it'll separate them out by layers. You want more of an agitation or cavitation to happen. And I don't think that the washing machine spins fast enough to actually act like a centrifuge. But I do believe that if you tried it in a centrifuge, you'd get separation of all the different, uh, different components because they will have a little bit of a specific gravity change or a specific gravity difference between them. Yes, we have missed you, Ori. Um, I'm hoping that maybe the end of this year, the beginning of next year, I might get a chance to get out to uh, that side of the country and have a chance to stop by. All right, so the question came up earlier about batteries, and, and Hoof made a, a very interesting comment about it, and it's don't, um, don't be afraid to spend money on bat batteries, and that's the truth. I have uh, four examples for you in the way of batteries, and I'll hold them up right now, and we'll touch on what each one of them are. So you can see I've got four different batteries right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with where I started. Um, these are Panasonic's. They're the NCR18650 PD. This is a high drain battery. Okay, it's an 18650 made by Panasonic. These are these are really good batteries. Now. If you're using a variable voltage, variable wattage device, you can pretty much use any of the top battery manufacturers. Panasonic, Orptronic, AWIMR, you can use an MNKE, you can use the Sony batteries. If you're using mechanical mods, you want to make sure that you know what the drain on your battery is and what the limitations of the battery are based upon what you're building if you're using a rebuildable. It's very important to know and understand that. It's basic safety. It's how you stop yourself from having issues. And this Panasonic right here, it's where I started. This still charges full. It's a fantastic battery. And 
these are right about I think uh, six to eight dollars a piece depending on where you go okay um, so this is a great place to get going if you're just getting into it and and you're using a, a variable voltage variable wattage device even if it's even if it's a 30 watt device or a 50 watt device it's it's not going to kill it because it's going to still be the the chip itself will be controlling the battery and it should have um, protection on it I believe that even the the DNA 30 boards have uh, they have protection for under an overdrain, but they don't have reverse battery protection, if I remember correctly. Now, these are batteries right here that everybody's been using, and they started cloning them, and you have to be really careful. This is the big name when I first came into this uh, almost a year ago, was the AWIMR. Um, AW stands for um, Andrew Wong, if I remember correctly his name. And the big thing that he does is every battery that he gets before he puts his little stamp on them, um, he tests. And he has a specific test that he runs every single battery through. And by doing that, he understands the quality and he sends, thank you very much, Spike, I appreciate that. Um, I just got to write something down, sorry. I totally forgot how to do this. So I'm sorry, I'm just a little disconnected tonight. Um, but the AWMRs are tested to very, very high standards. Uh, they're great batteries, again, for a variable voltage, variable wattage. Um, I wouldn't use these on a mechanical mod for anything that's under point, if it's point 0.9, you're kind of at the limits of the battery. So I wouldn't recommend this for for doing anything mechanical. I mean, if you're running something like this where you have an HH357 at 2 ohms or 1.2 ohms or you're running a mechanical with a, a tank on it, that's fine. But if you're, gonna, if you're doing anything where you're rebuilding, I wouldn't use this just because um, the discharge rates on it aren't high enough to handle builds that are going to go below what I consider to be a safe point. And the, the accepted safe point is at about 80% of the battery's drain. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't tell me what the drain is on it. So I'm going to assume that it's not a high drain battery. So it's probably going to be a 10 amp battery, which means you don't want to put it more than 0.8 amps, which means anywhere about 0.9 is pushing it. Um, that's just uh, loose calculations. Don't quote me on that. Batteries that I got where I started to do rebuilds right here are the Orbtronics. Now, the Orbtronics, they have two different manufacturers. Uh, Panasonic makes the core for the um, Orbtronics, and then Orbtronic has their own cores. This happens to be a, a PD2900. This is a 10-amp battery. It says right on it what the drain is. And it's a high drain battery, which means it's designed to be taken down a little bit lower. So instead of freaking out at, say, 3.7 or 3.8, this battery can go down to about 3.5 and still be in the safe area, but I don't recommend pushing it that hard. Um, this battery also lasts forever, and I do mean forever, in a variable voltage, variable wattage device. I've been able to go, um, on my SVD, I was able to go, um, it was about five days of heavy vaping with a, uh, a tank on it. So you can, um, you know, it, to infer from that. Now, these are expensive. The AWIMRs and the uh, Orbtronics get up there in price. AWs right now, they've dropped a little bit. They're around nine, eight to nine dollars a battery. These Orbtronics, uh, the PD2900s on the webs on Orbtronics website are going for about eleven dollars a battery. Again, it, it's about usage. I would use this at no lower than 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 7 pushing it, maybe 0 0.8. So we're going to, you know, we want to play it safe. We always want to play safe with our batteries. Okay. Now, this battery right here, everybody knows this one. This is a Sony VCT battery. This one just happens to be the 4. 
And the, diff the main difference between the 4 and the 5 is the 2100 milliamps to 2600 milliamps. It's just how long it lasts. Uh, most people, or a lot of people that I've been read about when it comes to the batteries, the uh, VCT4s have a higher initial drain. But what will happen is with the VCT5s, even though they both have a really good initial drain, the VCT5s fall off a little bit faster than the VCT4s. Um, in all honesty, I can't tell the difference. I honestly can't. What I tell the difference is after I've been vaping on something hard for about two hours, three hours, I know that the VCT5 after about two to three hours is just still pounding it really hard, whereas the VCT4 is falling off on flavor and, and vapor production. Um, that's a function of the milliamp hours on it. Um, a lot of my builds, uh, for those of you who may or may not know, a lot of my builds I run down as low as 0.25 on a couple of my builds. Um, pretty much everything that I do is somewhere in the ballpark of 0.3 ohms. So I'm going fairly low and I haven't had any problems with my VCT5s and my VCT4s. Uh, the only time they heat up is when I'm burning in a new uh, a new build. Um, I haven't touched on the 26650 yet. So I'm going to get there. Now there's a couple other batteries I don't have. EFEST has produced a um, 30 amp and they've produced a 35 amp battery. The EFEST batteries are very, very good. Um, the only reason I don't have them is I just decided to stick with, I, uh, the EFEST became less available for a while, and then the Sonys came out, and the Sonys were more available, so I decided to go everything Sony for me. Um, but the, the purple EFEST, they're phenomenal batteries. Uh, the one thing I'm gonna tell you is if a ba battery has the word fire in it, don't buy it. Do not buy a battery that has the word fire in it. Um, and the reason being is a lot of these batteries are cores that don't meet spec. And they get repackaged. And um, they're, I don't know. I don't want to gamble with a battery. I've had two mods go off in my pocket and get super hot. And I'm happy the fact that they both had Sony VCT5s in them because my batteries could handle the mod going off in my pocket and I didn't have to worry about the battery exploding or venting on me. So take it for what it's worth. Um, spend some money on batteries. Now the, the, the 26650 stuff has come up and there's a lot of going back and forth with uh, what battery is what. Now personally again I'm using the Sony's um, I haven't had any problems with them. I run them pretty low. I believe that the, this build in my in my uh, Hades is running. I don't know. Can I take? No, I'm not gonna be able to take it off. I think this build in my Hades is running um, right around 0.4, and this battery will last me like four or five days because I don't hit it as hard as all my other stuff but I haven't had any problems with overheating or, or anything of that nature. 26650s are, are by nature a completely different animal as well. They may have um, the, they may have the same life, say a 2600 uh, Ma, which is milliamp hours, but um, they, because it is a bigger battery, the cell can take a little bit more abuse than an 18650 or 18350 or 18490. So they are a little bit hardier. Um, they can take it. They can handle it. They can keep dishing it out. Again, though, you just want to make sure that you understand your battery. Um, pretty much that's the biggest thing. I need a vape. Mm. Beta morph. So, when it comes to 26650s, you can do the Sonys, you can do the, MKE, the MNKEs. Uh, both of them are very good. I believe EFES just came out with a new 26650 battery, or they've had one for a short amount of time, and I believe it's, it's on the same par as the, the purple wraps, the, the, both the uh, 30 and 35 amp batteries. So, I don't see anything wrong in, in using different batteries for 26650 but pretty much everything comes down to don't be afraid to spend money on them um, 
this is the most volatile piece of your equipment arsenal and this is the piece that can cause the most issues um, and can and can pose you know a, a real physical danger so why you know you don't go out and and spend ten dollars on a child car seat so why should you spend two dollars on a battery you know put the money into it um, when it comes to charging Nikor just came out with a brand new charger um, very similar to the eFest LUC I haven't played with it yet I haven't read too much about it but it's supposed to be very very good I have two analog Nikor chargers that I've been using uh, since day one they're great and the eFest LUC is a phenomenal charger in fact when I went to San Francisco this last weekend I took it with me because it has not only a car charger adapter but I can plug it into a wall as well and I can fast charge or I can slow charge so pretty much when it comes down to batteries that's that's about the extent of my knowledge there's a lot of great uh, information out there if you happen to be a member of ECF uh, which is electronic cigarette form there's a lot of great information on there from guys who know way more about electronics and, and about batteries than I do who actually put it, batteries through cycle tests and everything else and um, you know uh, those guys the guys who do it are electrical engineers um, they really know what they're talking about so if you have more in-depth questions than what I can answer please check seek them out seek the ECF form out for the batteries it, slim the LG I have no personal experience with but I've heard great things about it I've heard that it does a, a great job I don't know the specs on it and so um, again I'd, I'd refer you back to the ECF form um, just because I don't have any information on it myself personally I don't want to give out bad information but uh, I've just heard that they do a very very good job and they're a very solid core and I believe LG is making cores for another um, either no it's uh, either Sanyo is making the LG cores or LG is making cores for Sanyo or something like that I can't remember but the uh, they're a good battery I mean they're not something that's uh, gonna just die on you for no reason and the biggest thing with the charger is if you don't have a charger that has indicators on it or smart technology on it you gotta watch it as soon as the light turns green pull it out of the charger don't let it sit there okay that's real real important Griff Striker that's what I've got right here Panasonic's great batteries um, like I said earlier this is the NCR 18650 PD this is a high drain battery I use this in um, my uh, mechanic my variable voltage variable wattage I also use it in my mechanical mods when I'm running um, like my uh, Nautilus on it or I'm running uh, something like this my HH357 on it so they're they're good batteries but um, I don't believe Panasonic's come out with a, a anything over a, a 10 or, or a 15 watt battery so I wouldn't recommend it for getting into uh, hard rebuilds you know you can do rebuildables when they're like 1.1 1.2 very easily you know any anything over one ohm pretty much the world is your oyster with batteries once you start going below one ohm you've got to be a little bit more careful because as we were saying about pushing the limits of batteries that you want to stay within 80 percent of the batteries uh, max discharge so like with a 30 amp battery um, 10 percent is 3 amps so Thir that's six amps so you want to stay within that 34 amp range and it's something that uh, you know you, you really want to be aware of and I actually do have a calculator for that I'll post it up later uh, that'll allow you to check what your uh, amperage output is off of a build so oh cheers everyone mm. how was how was the dog walk Yes, the first one's going down. It's going down really smooth. Ah, crap, there was all types of goodies in the bottom of this. It sucks. And what I mean by goodies is the yeast. They, they sometimes do bottle-side fermentation. They put a little extra yeast in there. It sinks to the bottom.
about uh, doing some reviews. Oh, no, we're not reviewing that. Um, for those of you who know, Andy, who is one of our former show hosts, is one of the lead chemists guys over at Vape Dojo. And then it's a courtesy to him. I'm actually reviewing the Vape Dojo that he sent to me. Uh, yeah, it is a good beer. Trust me. Uh, it's from California. I have to look up where it is in California. I'm a California native, and I have no idea where this city is. But it's a, it's a good beer. So, uh, uh, oh, I love the G2 Vazilla. But it's like Jay, Jake was talking about last night that he can taste the diacetyls in it. So <laughs> diacetyls are not the best thing in the world. So, so far I've, I've gone through a couple of different vapes. In fact, I took, um, I took at two uh, vape dojos with me this weekend. I took uh, Andy's secret uh, sauce, as I like to call it, beautiful coconut vape. And I took the um, cinnamon toast chata with me, and that was in my K-Fun. That's pretty much all that I... Uh, yeah, vape expectations. Thank you. Thank you, Fiery. Thank you, Hoof. So, we're actually going to talk about that tonight, Vic. It's part of the rest of the show. So, what I've got here is I've got my HH357. I've got a brand new fresh Orbtronic battery. This is an M16 clone. doesn't hit the hardest in the world, but it's not what I'm looking for. And what I'm reviewing tonight is what's called the black menthol. It is a 60-40 uh, blend, so it's a high PG blend. I had this earlier in a dripper, and it, the, 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 the cool side of it, or the, 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 the mint side of it, was just way too intense in a dripper. Um, Wheezy? E-Wheezy. Okay. Cool. Thank you for helping me with that. I appreciate it. So we're going to give this a taste right now. That's nice. I'll, I'll tell you something. When you're running this on like a, a point six build with a super with super, when you're running with G plat wires on it, forget about it. It's like out of the, out of the question. I think this is going to be a great tank liquid, though. Right off the bat, the mint is not too hard. It's not too heavy. It's not too harsh. It's more like the culotta, which creates that nice kind of cool on the intake. Uh, it's, it's like the cool without the, uh, the mint flavor going on, which is really nice. Back end is definitely blackberry. I mean, it's almost a, it's almost a blackberry bubble gum is the way I'm catching it. I can see putting this into one of my K funds and going nuts on it. Thank you, Silverbacker. I totally appreciate it. I think that's really good. This is definitely a tank liquid. This is not a dripper liquid. It also leaves a, um, a coolness on the exit. Your, your, your mouth feels nice and cool and refreshed. Um, Yeah, it definitely has like this this kind of dark berry bubble gummy. It's not like heavy bubble gum. It's almost like the bubble gum is kind of like an afterthought. It could just be my interpretation of the flavor. I think this is a great liquid. I think this would do very well in a tank. I think this would be um, something that if you like coolada um, or if you like something that has like a little burst of that cool flavor in your mouth. This is going to be really, really good. Uh, it's got great flavor. Like I said, this is probably, after I finish off my, my K-Fun that I have running right now, this is probably going to go into my K-Fun next. Uh, my K-Fun travels with me to and from work, so it's like I like having something like this at the end of the night. Uh, it's a nice light flavor. It's not going to be overpowering. I, I'm, I think it's a great flavor. So hats off, hats off to Andy at uh, Vape Dojo. Uh, 
I want to talk about cotton versus rayon because right now I'm running rayon in the majority and I do mean the majority of my drippers oh I overfilled this one hold on a sec here ah now I'm making a mess everywhere son of a bitch there I go channeling twisted 420 again um, there's there's a lot of controversy about rayon and I forgot to grab the website for you so I could link you to it so everybody could get an education but um, I am going to actually give everybody a little bit of an education about what rayon is because there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding and a lot of misinformation rayon is not what they use for clothing it is not a processed oil um, to make a plastic fabric. Rayon is made from wood pulp, from specifically wood cellulose. And they take the wood cellulose and they actually spin it into a cotton-like material. Um, the, this, actually, this product actually goes back to World War I, where Kimberly Clark uh, took this product because Kimberly Clark was originally a paper company and they had all this wood pulp or the cellulose left over after they made paper. So they devised this stuff and they sold it to the military for filler for gas, ma gas masks during World War I. Now if you're familiar with World War I, the biggest thing that was being used was mustard gas which is a combination of two different chemicals and it was very deadly. Well, the thing about it was it wasn't a gas per se, other rather than a, um, a very fine atomization of liquid. So this material was used because it absorbs liquid so well, that it, and it still has a, a, a very light consistency. In fact, I have some right here. This is rayon. As you can see, it kind of looks like cotton. It feels like cotton. It squeaks a little bit and it has long straight fibers. It's absolutely phenomenal for absorbency. So World War I ended and then uh, Kimberly Clark turned around and said they had so much of this product that they actually made it into pressure bandages. So what um, yeah, it, it, that's we're gonna get there D-backs because I'm gonna talk about that specifically. Um, what Kimberly Clark did is they made bandages out of it. Now, if you've ever seen a World War II movie, you see what they use as pressure bandages, which is the things they shake out of their pack, has two long pieces of uh, material on it and a block of stuff like that. Well, it's a pressure bandage because you would wrap it around the wound, you'd tie it off after putting sulfa on it, hitting the person with morphine, and getting them off the front line. Um, it's super absorbent. But what happened is during World War II, nurses started using the pressure bandages as sanitary napkins because of its absorbency rather than wearing a rag which is what they used to do a rag or a piece of cloth uh, between their undergarments and themselves during that time of the month so what they and hence the phrase on the rag anyway uh, we won't get into that but uh, they found that it was very very absorbent and when they reported this back to Kimberly Clark Kimberly Clark sat there and had an aha moment and that's where the development of the Kotex line came out of. And the Kotex was the first sanitary product for women. Um, and they started out as a sanitary napkin. And this was, this was used to fill sanitary napkins. It is, a, it is still used in surgical theaters um, in, the, in the form of sponges. Uh, uh, it, can, it, it has replaced gauze in some aspects. It's used in um, hair styling to protect a person who's having hair color or permanent done from the from the liquids dripping down onto their faces. Um, and um, it, its uh, properties are such that it pulls moisture away from the, set, the outer edges and pulls it into the center. That's what it is. It is a natural product. It is not this information. Thank you, Easy. Thank you, Easy. Um, 
it is not a uh, plastic. It's not a petroleum product. Most people think of rayon. You think about 80s, the 1980s, 1990s with the rayon shirts. You didn't use your iron too high. Otherwise, you'd either melt it or scorch the shirt and it'd get shiny. It's not that product. I think rayon is a complete misnomer. It is the wrong thing to call it. It is, its actual name is cellul cellulo cotton. In other words, cellulose cotton made from wood fiber. Now, this I picked up, as you can see, it's 500 feet, so I have enough wick to rest, last the rest of my life. Um, I picked it up from Sally Beauty Supply, and that box cost me less than $12. It's cheaper than three bags of organic cotton balls, and even organic cotton balls will still have some residual chemicals from the bleaching process, uh, be it hydrogen peroxide. There's some kind of, of um, hydroxide product that's always going to be a little bit of a residual thing. Um, the thing I wanted to talk about with this is there's a couple of things I've noticed. First of all, there is a little bit of no. Okay, hypergasm, there's two schools of thoughts, yes and no. I don't, okay? When everything is said and done at the end of the day, um, I never boiled a cigarette in my life, and I never had a single problem when it came to cotton or filler related material. Um, that's personal preference. In my opinion, I wouldn't worry about it in the least. Um, yeah, leisure suits hoof, which goes back to leisure suit Larry the lounge lizard. Anyway, for those of you who know old school video games. Um, and what I have come up with in the thinking, in my experience with it so far, is there's a short break-in period to it. And I do mean a short break-in period. When you first load it up, the first couple of times, I would say load it, burn it a little bit, and then reload it and vape it, and I think you won't have the issues. At first, when you start first starting to use it, you're going to sense a little bit of a difference to it. And I think that um, that's just getting used to it as well. Now, um, the other thing is you can tell when a dry hit is coming, which is really interesting because, like I just had right now, I took a hit. It wasn't a dry hit like you would get on cotton where you make the face of doom, start choking your brains out, and you have to grab something to drink really quick. Um, and then you're sitting there for 10 minutes going, eh. Um, but it lets you know that it's going on the drier side. Um, I've also noticed you can hit it repeatedly. You can hit it longer than with cotton. If you notice with cotton, if you hit something repeatedly, like say three times in a row, you're going to get the face of doom no matter how much liquid is still in it. Um, I personally like it. And what I've noticed is when I've gone back to builds that have cotton in them, I get this... You, you've seen kids do this where they... You know, sucking on their t-shirt. They're, they're sucking on their t-shirt like that. The same flavor you get from sucking on your t-shirt is kind of the aftertaste I get from cotton. Uh, let's see what happened here to the music. Did it not? Oh, you rat bastard. Give me a moment here. I should have put all of that into there. Okay. So we'll play it from there. There we go. What the hell? That shouldn't be doing that. No, I don't want you to do that. I've been having technical problems all day long. There we go. Okay. Um, what I've noticed is I get cleaner flavors. I get more distinct flavors. I'm really tasting the liquid. And if you've ever dropped a little drop of the liquid on your hand and taste the liquid, and then you go back and vape it, what you taste and what you get off the vape is much closer than what you get off the cotton. I'm not saying cotton's a bad thing. If you like cotton, stay with it. If you want to try the rayon, try it. Uh, rayon, cellular cotton. I, I honestly think that it's a good product. I think that... Um, 
it's, you know, I would experiment with it if you're looking to change or you have trouble finding organic cotton balls or if you're not a fan of using a cotton roll or whatever the case may be. Um, definitely, I would say give it a shot. See what happens. Personally, I like it. I'm getting much better results. And I will tell you something, this thing wicks like a demon. So if you have a lot of liquid going on inside of it, um, you know, on... Um, I can't see I can't see an application in vaping that it's not going to work within. Whether you're squonking, whether you're dripping, whether you're tanking, whatever the case may be. In fact, we've already kicked around the idea in rebuilding like the Nautilus coils to eliminate that inner liner and use a little bit more of uh, rayon in it because the wicking the wicking capability is so good that I think you could actually remove that inner liner that's inside the heads of the Nautilus tanks. Now, don't quote me on that. I haven't tried it yet. It's a thought we've kind of kicked around. So I, I think that the rayon, let's just, I still hate calling it that. God. Um, the cellu the cellulose cotton, let's just say, I, I think is a, a, good, a good option. And it just comes down to personal comfort. And I'm always willing to try things and experiment. And I, my whole thought was if I tried it and I didn't like it, I'd just take it to the local beauty school that's uh, a couple miles away and I'd hand it to them and say, here, um, I bought this and I don't need it. It's all yours. So I, I think rayon is uh, cellulose cotton is not a bad thing. Um, in fact, I think it's a pretty good thing. I think the flavor is fantastic. I think it is really good there is another advantage to it if if I remember correctly from what I read what I'm reading it is fire resistant so it, it it does burn but it doesn't burn the way a lot of other things were like if you were to light cotton on fire it actually does catch fire it does actually flame this doesn't it just kinda of vaporizes so it's a little bit different So, you know what? Screw this. I'm not happy with this playlist. There we go. Give me one moment here. There we go. All right. So with that being said, that's my take on, on uh, the cellulose cotton. Take it for what it is and uh, run with it from there. Uh, personally, I'm going to continue to use it. Um, until something else comes along that's even better or I'm going to um, you know <sighs> you know there's caustic chemicals in pretty much everything that's being produced Vic cotton the the oils and everything that are on the cotton gin the um, lubricants they use while they're spinning the cotton then depending on how they bleach it whether it's a chlorine bleach or if it's a hydrogen peroxide bleach I mean everything has something to it uh, I would say if, if, if you're really kinda of freaked out try this stuff I don't I, I believe it's naturally white you don't have to bleach it you know so take it for what it's worth. These are my experiments. These are my experiences. And I'll be very honest and tell you that I'm quite happy with it. So I want to talk, I want to talk about some hardware that I got. And I got a piece of hardware. Um, I ordered, uh, last week, if you remember, I, I reviewed the Dominator which is a uh, topper here and when I ordered the dominator I didn't expect it I, I didn't expect this what I ended up getting was a magma uh, right here I got a magma topper came with my order which was pretty surprising I didn't expect to end up opening a box up and seeing um, <laughs> seeing a uh, an extra an extra topper on top now 
I'll try to do this without making a mess because I just filled this. The magma, it unscrews from the top and it has two coils. But the air holes, and I'll make sure I use a pointer instead of my fat fingers. The air holes are down here underneath where you build. Now you can build this for single and double coil, which is really good. So if you're a single coiler and you like single coil, perfect. If you like dual coil, perfect. It has one negative and one positive post, so it's two posts. It's really easy to build on. But what makes it really cool is the juice well. I'm going to show you how deep that juice well is. I'm not joking when I said I've just stuck that screwdriver in. Well, you can see about where the juice is on it. It has this monstrous juice well. So when you build it, you build it with the tails sticking out the end of the coil, and you kind of stuff them down into that juice well. You fill it up with liquid. Uh, make sure your holes are lined up. You have an airflow control ring. You can see there's two three millimeter holes, one on each side. And yes, it, it does get a little bit messy, uh, especially if you do stupid things like me and, and overfill it by accident. Uh, but because it allows you to do both single and dual coil builds on it, it is a really easy build. Um, and it's a, it's a great place. If you really don't want to drip, but you want something, if, if you want to drip, but you don't like the idea of carrying around a bottle of juice and dripping every so often, this is a great way to go. Now, this also came with a drip tip. Um, the drip tip, let me put the cap back on and I'll get into that. And of course, it's a, it's a screw down cap, so you don't have to worry about it coming loose and, and it holds the O ring, the, um, airflow ring in place. This is the actual drip tip that came with it. Oh, son of a bitch. Stay. Now I guess got to find the other piece to it. It's around here somewhere. Uh, okay. It's on my de it's on my build table, on my desk here somewhere. But it's a three-piece drip tip. So it comes with this base, which is what plugs into your 510 connector. It has a clear plastic piece that goes in here. And then it has this threaded top cap. And they just all screw together. They're interchangeable. You can make them however you want. Plus, you can use any standard drip tip as well. It's not limited. This one's actually, that's surprising. Here, let's, you know, you just got to find, I mean, it's not going to work with every single drip tip, but it's worked with most of mine. But uh, this drip tip I found works the best. And why does it work the best? This is, not a, this is not a cloud chasing device. This is a flavor device. Okay, The cap inside has a little bit of a um, concentrator for flavor. And I've noticed in using a wide bore drip tip that that's all taken away. So I'm just going to take a, I'm going to have a little bit here. I'll show you how well it works. So if you look in the bottom right hand corner. And I think I've got this built at, I don't know, 0.6 or something, 0.6 or 0.7. And I'll tell you something, this is, this is amazing flavor. This flavor is on par uh, with the Nautilus, the K-Fun. It's got a better draw. And of course you have multiple hole so you can make it as tight as you want. You have three choices. I leave it wide open. Um, but I've done it at every level and it still has really awesome, really, really awesome flavor. And I'm just, I love it. I would have never bought this for myself. Never. Um, honestly, I would have never thought about buying this for myself. I thought it was gimmicky. I thought the drip, the juice well was something that was useless. I mean, I, I've seen a lot of people on G Plus say, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. You know, um, in my personal opinion, I'm, I'm an idiot for not having bought it. Um, would I buy it now? Would I recommend it now, especially to like a uh, new vapor 
who wants to head into the realm of dripping, hell yes. You can build this with anything from 32 to 28, and I've got dual 24s in there. I think it's a, uh, I, I think it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, I, the flavor's amazing. That's the only thing I can say. The only problem is, um, you can't lay it down. You lay it down, it's going to puke everywhere. So for Hoof, who likes to lay all his mods flat, this is definitely not for him. He's going to have to leave it standing up. And believe you me, I set it on its side once, and I had the mess to prove it. But um, amazing flavor. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Oh, Let's see what I pull out of the magic bag. So my recommendation is if you want to get into dripping and you're not sure what you want to get or you're not comfortable with the idea about carrying a bottle around with you all the time, um, I would definitely do this. You know, it's it's just a, a a great device. They're inexpensive. Um, I be, I believe I've seen them for less than twenty bucks or right around twenty bucks a piece. And I think for a rebuildable, the machining quality is good. I didn't have to deburr it. The um, positive post uses the uh, same type of isolator that's used on the K fun to um, protect it. Um, it uses, a, it uses slotted screws, and these things do not back off. These things get in there. They get in there tight. I didn't have to open up the holes. Um, I, I'm almost willing to try a dual parallel build in it with something like a, a, a 28 or a 26 gauge. I believe there's enough room for it. Have a good night, Daniel. Danielle. So, take care of the puppies. Make sure they get lots of treats and lots of scratches. You know, this isn't really a baby dripper either. This is this is a great way to begin because you're going to get tons of flavor. And, you know. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about magnets. Let's talk about what magnets do. Uh, benefits things like that. There are some mods out there, like the Stingray, that come with magnets inside the switch already. Basically what you're using is you're using two magnets and you're using their opposite poles to act as a spring. Um, so for those of you who understand that, what you're doing is you're using the repellent force of the magnet by using um, oppositely charged poles. Now, <laughs> what do magnets do? Now, uh, in replacing switches, what I have found, magnets will shorten the throw of the button. Uh, unlike a spring, when you heat a magnet up, it actually becomes better, but with a spring, when you heat it up, it becomes less. Uh, less. Uh, uh, it ceases having its, its uh, ability to return to its original shape. Because even though there's almost no heat going through there, there's still heat going through the spring because you're using the spring as a conductor. Now, in the case of the Stingray here, you know what, we'll do this. I don't like, I don't like pulling these things apart, but for the sake of it, I will do this tonight. And I'll do it with the uh, Stingray. The other devices out there are a little bit different because you have to buy magnets and replace the magnets. But this is this is the switch for the Stingray and the only reason I'm using this is because this is a little bit easier to put back together than pulling the Nemesis apart. So what you're going to see is this insulator that's right here is going to come off with the uh, upper with the contact pin. So we're going to pop this out. Well, we're not going to leave this in the in there. And right back there is the magnet. Okay. This side of the magnet right here, as you see it attracts my screwdriver, is one charge. This is the other half of the switch. Magnet right here. It still attracts my screwdriver. And it's surrounded by copper. So what's happening is when you push it together, the magnet has a little bit of a recess. So these this copper ring around the outside is what's making contact. But the magnets together, and I'll give you an idea, 
You try to push them together. See how it kind of flies out of my hand? I'm not dropping that. Let's see if you can see this better. See how it flipped over? Now that's where you have them in opposite poles, so they attract each other. But when both sides are positive or both sides are negative, there's a repellent force, and they're always going to try to attract to their other side. Um, what I have found is that magnets are smoother. They are easier to, uh, to work with, in, in my opinion. They shorten the throw of a switch. Oh, come on. This is, this is the problem. You have this housing, this brass housing, and you have to bring it out before you try to put this together. Otherwise, the insulator doesn't screw in. The, the uh, copper contact piece actually screws into the insulator. Oh, come on now. And so what you're seeing here as I push it down, that little bit of movement. Let's see if I can get a better. You can see it moving here. Let's see. I'll do it like this. It's not moving a lot. It's moving very little. The space, maybe if we do it like this, you can see how, you can see, yeah, there we go. That's better. You can see how little that's moving to actually make the contact. But you can also see that it pops back. And that's what, the, that's what magnets do. It, in my opinion, works better than springs any day of the week. I get better contact, I get better hits, um, I get better battery efficiency. Mm. Still not sure about this liquid. It's called Mysterious by Clever Vape. Definitely. It's just like a little bit of cognac in it, a little bit of vanilla, but there's some other things floating around in it. But that's what magnets are about. Um, Magnets are, are not a great mystery, um, especially in a nemesis. Magnets are the best. Um, both my nemesis have magnets in them. I use three magnets. I put two on the top, one on the bottom. Um, and the only reason I do that is I found that if I put two on the bottom and one on the top, I, the top one had a tendency to break because it doesn't have as much support. Um, I think I honestly think that, that magnets are how switches should be. Now, when I got my Heimdall, because they don't make a magnet for it, what I actually did is I took my Nemesis springs, which are stronger than the springs that were in this, and put the Nemesis springs into here, which ended up working out really, really well. But they don't make magnets for this mod yet. And yes, I agree. Magnets are much superior. I know uh, the DIY is a new section of my show, uh, showing you kind of like how to do the basic DIY, which reminds me. Uh, for those of you who missed it and saw me do the DIY last week, I'll, I'll tell you the whole thing. I kind of screwed up with my proportions. I put them in at, at one-tenth their normal strength, what I had calculated everything out at, so I had made the adjustments. Uh -oh. Battery rattle. Um, so I adjust them. I let it uh, steep a little bit. In fact, this weekend while I was away, it steeped for three days, just, oh, God, beer burps. Steeped right in this, right in this, uh, this conic right here. Cap on, just steeped away. Uh, yesterday, after tasting it, I added a little bit more graham cracker to it. Now it's on my mod that doesn't like that doesn't play nicely. I remember that this I made this is 100% PG, so it's uh. I'm not getting good battery contact. Uh, 
better, but not great. Um, yeah, that's the whole thing. Things are going to change over time. Because I was reading on, um, I was reading on one of the, the DIY blogs that cheesecake usually takes three days to come in. And I will tell you, the cheesecake is there. It's not heavy. I probably could add more, but I have a feeling it's going to come out. It's going to come out a little bit more. I'm liking it. So I had promised Fiery that I would send her some of this. So I'm going to send Fiery some of this. I have one more empty bottle here if I don't vape it up. But um, it's uh, it turned out pretty good for my first real DIY attempt. Now, would I recommend doing a five-flavor DIY right off the bat? No. I would recommend what Jim will tell you is, is the way to go about it is to do single flavor and to understand the strengths. Um, to understand strengths, to understand what the individual strengths are and take lots of notes. Um, so you understand uh, what the single, the single flavor strength is. There we go. Mm. Yeah, the gram is there. The cheesecake is coming through. Chocolate is sitting there. Coconut's kind of an afterthought. So, I'm, I'm calling it a success. Um, I think it could be better. Am I going to dick with it more? No. Uh, I might dick with it in another batch. Uh, once I get uh, my supply set up where I have VG available to me, because I don't have uh, anything with VG in it right now, because this is like the beginnings of me uh, playing with stuff, then I'll, I'll dick with the recipe. So... Um, you know, that's what DIY is. Don't be afraid to DIY because if you don't like it and you got to pour it down the drain or give it to somebody who might like it, let them try it. If they like, give it to them, whatever. That's fine. Uh, DIY is inexpensive enough that you can do that. I, uh, starting out, I wouldn't make anything bigger than 10 milliliters, 20 milliliters. So. Mm. And just uh, to refresh everyone's memory, what this is supposed to be is a chocolate coconut cheesecake. And uh, it used five flavors, which are TFA flavors for co it's coconut extra. It's a little bit of Bavarian cream, uh, graham cracker dark, and New York style cheesecake with the triple chocolate blend. And the triple chocolate blend is amazing. Just remember, if you squirt it all over yourself, if you're a guy, as soon as you squirt it all over yourself and you get mostly cleaned up, go sit next to the woman that you're in love with. She'll love you forever because you're going to smell like uh, you're going to smell like chocolate. Trust me, I went to bed that night smelling like chocolate, and my fiance was quite happy. So. Uh, Got to find humor in everything. Yeah, don't be afraid to fail. <laughs> Please. Because let's put it this way. If, if you fuck it up, you fuck it up. It's no big deal. <laughs> you have to learn. This is, this is just like making a cocktail or cooking, um, cooking something that you've never tried to cook before. It, it's, a, a, it's a matter of experimentation. It's a matter of, uh, you know, oh, yeah. What, what I recommend for guys, especially for your girls, especially if it's been one of those long days, take a little bit of the uh, Capella's hot chocolate, give it a couple of drips down there. Good to go. Anyway. <laughs> especially if your girl likes chocolate. <laughs> um, you know what? Hey, Jim, is your Skype open?
And ladies and gentlemen, the hoofer is with us. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. I got to bring you in, buddy. I got to be in I forgot to meet the room. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this has nothing to do with our conversation. Nice. <laughs> hey, everybody. I wasn't uh, expecting this, but it's okay. Hey, you know what? It's always fun to have Hoof with us. Let me uh, make the adjustments I need to make really quickly here because I know I'm going to be super loud. <laughs> you no, know, no, you keep Cass out of the room. <laughs> Cass gets me all worked up. You <laughs> <Oofy> girls. <laughs> Let me take it down here. All right, so now now Hoof and I should be on a reasonable level with each other. I no, love I love having Hoof in. Uh, he's always good. But since I'm talking about DIY, it's always good to uh, bring Hoof into the picture because uh, you know I mean this is this is one of our DIY masters here at Vapon. You know. So he's he's definitely the man that has way more experience than I do, but I always like to, you know, I always like to, uh, you know. Plus, I like his, along, I like his, I like his smile. My smile. You know, I like my, I like my laugh. I like your laugh. I like your I smile. Know. And you're not wearing a wife beater tonight. No, I it's underneath actually. It's underneath. Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Hey, you know what? We should have a fur off one night. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that. <laughs> I actually, I actually got some juice today. I, yeah, if I put this on, I got some my F5, a 50 milliliter bottle from F5 today. Nice. And it's it's a SMP, which I'm assuming is like probably strawberry, mango, pineapple. This is what I get out of it. I think. Okay. It's pretty good. I actually would probably like a little bit more of each flavor. I mean, it's, it's good, but yeah, I would like it a little bit stronger myself, but you know, off the bat, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I, um, yeah. I, had, some, I had some F5, and um, I liked it. Thank you, Laura. I liked it. It was uh, the, the pomegranate. Mm hmm And um, when... Uh, when uh, Dallas girl needed a little bit of liquid to help her out there, I wanted to get that to her because it's some some good juice. So, All right. there we go. We got your name up next to you now. Oh no, you typed me in there, Jen. Yeah, the hoofer. There we go. There we go. The hoofer. <laughs> the hoofinator. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are terrible. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, right back at you, man. Right back at you. Uh, God, this. <sighs> This prohibition ale is so sick. It's so good. You know, it's funny because I don't have. I was looking for something different. You know, and I found that. Um, I guess I could for that Laura Backens, whatever the hell that stuff that Cadillac drinks. Okay. What what is it? What's it called? Because of an L. Like. I wish. I, I don't know. It's a long name. It's because of an L. It's like the name like that long across the. Oh, you're talking about Ligan uh, Coolgan? Yeah, that sounds it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, I've had that before. Um, it, it's it's really not bad. I just their their style is a very different style than what I like. I'm I'm more into the European style beers with the more hop, the higher hop signature, and, uh, and a little bit more uh, more into the uh, malt and everything else. I mean, you can see the, the color of this, the head on it, and everything else. A little bit of a, a dark copper, light brown. Exactly, dear back. The, line and Kugels, yeah. I yeah, Line and Kugels, you, thank you. Yeah. But that's the only, uh, you know, now I don't want to say weird, because weird's not the name I'm looking for, but that's, uh, my beer distributor doesn't have like, you know, 300 beers to choose from, you know. You got Yang Lang, which I'm cool with that. Ling you know? Ling, yeah. And, and you know what? Okay. I, I see, let's see. Line let's... and Kugel, Line and Kugel. Okay, that's it. That's how you pronounce it. I, I we're going to, we're going to, we're gonna do something really quick here, Huff. Oh gonna, my goodness! Nice. Look I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can get his ass into it. <laughs> We're gonna have a three-way. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think I I think Jake's probably at the lab and up to his ass in alligators. <laughs> probably. So let's see if we can get Jake in here. Yeah. What tastes like what tastes like fruity pebbles, Piper? Is he saying lime and cocoa tastes like fruity pebbles? I named my third member Lime and Cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, you have three members? What? He's like a tripod on the beach. What, 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 how's it, has it like, was it like that? What's that? I don't even know what was that. I get it. He's, he's like a tripod for a very small camera. <laughs> Live long and prosper, that's all I got, you know? Oh, oh. <laughs> Tony is busy. She won't answer. Fiery won't answer. She's busy. Oh, no. Oh, Jen doesn't want her to voice now? Damn. Okay. Come on, Tony. Pick up the phone. Oh, uh, yeah, see, um, it's weird because, see, okay, I'll, I'll go back to my childhood here for a second. And I'm going to specifically talk about cereals as an example. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'm more the, the, frosted, uh, the frosted mini wheat slash, uh, what's the, uh, Tony the Tiger, you know, Frosted Flakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it gives me that, uh, like, Captain Crunchy kind of Fruity Pebbles, that waxy feel on the top of my throat, I cannot take that. I hate that waxy, icky stuff. <laughs> oh, no, not today. <laughs> Tony's out. <laughs> Tony's out. Jake's out. They're the only ones I'm showing up. Well, Cadillac, I know, is in class right now. Mm -hmm. I know Jedi's sitting here, but he's... Probably not going to answer. I know Greg's not going to answer. I mean, they're not. They're not. Uh, well, you know what? Let me let me see if I can. Who can we add to this just for shits and giggles? Greg, maybe. Uh, one thing. One thing. Greg doesn't. He didn't do his hair. So <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. My hair is a mess. He can't use that excuse. Yeah. <laughs> No, Greg, Greg. Greg is Greg is blocked. He's not Greg not going to let us call him. Oh jeez. Oh, it's just us then. Yeah, I know. Uh, Courtney, but I, she probably is too busy. Oh, you know what? You know who we could call? Beebs, answer, damn it. I know you're there. I know you're listening. Answer. I don't care if you've got the red up. Oh, she's not going to answer either. I love oh, this. So she, she comes in. No can do. No can do. Yeah, I'm sure you can't. I'm sure you can't, Greg. And Beeps isn't going to answer either. I love it how all the mods come in and then they don't. They don't actually become part of the show. I, but I'm always here. Beeps. But then again, I'm always working. So I mean, I have my I have my work over here. I have this over here. So I'm always here. Yeah. Now, now, yeah, I know it would be the bomb. Yeah. It's, it's grab Ori. You know what? Oh, no, I don't want to, I don't want to remove her from contacts. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no me. I won't remove beeps from the contacts list. <laughs> Ori, I wish you had, I wish you had Skype. Or I wish I had you on my Skype. I'd love to Skype you in. Oh, her son is sick. I'm sorry. Tony, how come you didn't answer if you're in here now? Come on. She says get D-backs. <laughs> get D-backs. No, this is a host thing. Not that I don't love D-backs. D-backs is a good good night. You know? I like I like him. He's a good guy. Come on, Fire, are you going to answer? No, Fire, Fire won't do it. Yeah, wah. All right, that's all right. It's just us. What does just, that, just remember, what, what on, on, have to do? On, on the 28th, there is going to be a monster roundtable. I don't know who's going to host it, but there's going to be a monster roundtable. You're going to see at least seven hosts on at once. I think this is, that's Beep Show, right? Yeah, on the 28th. Boy, good luck setting those screens up and getting everybody on the screen. <laughs> nah, it's, it's easy enough. Yeah, it is. Ori, I would pull you in on general principles. 
Just because. Because, yep, because just, it already is awesome sauce. That's why. Yep. And it's only at point six. Jen, what's the what's the fancy schmancy cotton? She's talking about the cellulose. Oh, okay. That's that's this, Jen. Go to like, go to Sally Sally's Beauty Supply. Five hundred feet is less than twelve bucks. Well, now you can get ten feet if you order it online and pay for shipping, but it's ridiculous at that point. Just go pick this up, and you're set for life. Cellulite. <laughs> I don't like cellulite. <laughs> I can honestly say I am vaping a tampon. <laughs> so, she said that's not it. I wonder what it is then. What are you talking about? You're talking about the Japanese cotton. Oh, that must be what she was referring to. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? The Japanese cotton is so overpriced, and the the two people that I've I've watched videos on when I was making the decision on to buy this or not has said that this stuff is on the same par as a Japanese cotton. But you use the same amount as you would. Okay. When you build a coil and you wick it with this stuff, you want to make sure that it's tight in the coil because it doesn't expand like regular cotton does. So when you put the juice on it, it doesn't expand out to fill it in. It will maintain its same size, but it holds a shit ton of liquid. I use probably two and a half mils just to saturate a new build. So I reckon, that's why I recommend the cellular cotton. It holds a ton of liquid. It doesn't burn as fast. When a dry hit is coming, you're given um, kind of almost a warning hit before it goes dry. And um, let's see here. Yeah, I, I could show you this, but you wouldn't understand. That's, that's a build I pulled out earlier, and you can't see it. It's, it works out better when it's in the naked eye. But that was uh, there's a couple of dry, short dry hits on that one, and there's no scorching on it. So it, it has a different – fuck it. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show people right now. And if I burn the house down, Natalie's going to kill me. I'll be right back. Uh-oh. He's going to burn the house down. <laughs> Good idea, Bax. Good night, D-Bax. Can you get a torch? What are you going to do? <laughs> yep, exactly. That's what I did. Because this has – a different property than regular cotton when it comes to burning it. I'm just going to use a small amount. I've got a coffee mug sitting here. So here is, this is the cellulose cotton. You can see what it does. This is what it burned down to. It's basically turning to pure ash. It's not like cotton where it catches fire. Uh, and does weird weird ass shit. It actually just disintegrates, but it has it does have a unique smell when it burns. It's not like regular cotton though. Um, I was playing with that earlier because I wanted to see how it would react if it was hit by something that was like 2200 degrees, which right. is my uh, my torch is right here. This is when you got a blue flame on it somewhere about 22 2400 degrees on it. And it flames up, but it just disappears. It's not going to sit there and burn and burn and burn and burn. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me. Who was that? It reminds me of uh, Kelly Bundy, right? <laughs> Can you hold so much stuff in her head before it falls out? <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, that's, that's why I like it because. It takes a lot to get it to ignite, and then when it ignites, it actually doesn't really burn. It actually just disintegrates. Um, so it doesn't give off a lot, it doesn't give off smoke. It doesn't give off a lot of stuff. It just kind of disintegrates itself. 